Hello friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. I just wanted to uh, put this little front end on this video to let you know that there's many places in this video where I refer to this guitar as probably being a Harmony or a Sears Silvertone, you know, which was, I, most of those were made by Harmony, I believe. But later, after I was finished, I did look it up on uh, eBay and I found an exact copy of the guitar and apparently it was a K Vanguard 100. So I just want to straighten that out here up front and uh, if you hear me refer to it some other way in the video, just ignore that. It is a K Vanguard 100. Hope you enjoy the video. <laughs> We have a little instrument in here that's kind of near and dear to my heart. It's got a good story with it. Uh, you may recall seeing the video that I put out uh, a while back. I uh, can't remember the number right offhand, but it's I think it's in the 140s, maybe 150s. It's about the, uh, the big baby tailor that was uh, unrepairable or unfixable or whatever you want to call it. Uh, that the teacher brought to me and or I think she's a teacher now I, I may have my stories mixed up there But anyway, the lady brought it to me her son had dropped it and busted it and uh, Anyway, it wasn't a very big fix. It was a very simple fix actually Well the same lady brought me this Now she found this in a storage locker and you would think well who cares? It's just a cheapy little electric guitar, right? Well, it just so happens that it belonged to her father. Her father has passed away, and they didn't know this even existed. They found it, and now they would like to restore it for their son and let their son have it as a, you know, a memento from, their, from his grandfather. So the reason it's near and dear to my heart is partly because of that story, but also because this is basically the first guitar I ever had. Now, it's not the exact same guitar. As a matter of fact, mine's older than this one, probably. But very, very similar. I'm guessing the, the badge had two little screw holes in here, and the badge is gone. My guess is it was a sear silver tone. Uh, that's a guess. But that's what I think mine was, was a sill sir. Uh, Sears silver tone. I still have mine, but it, the badge doesn't have it either. And I, it, mine, I think I'm almost positive mine was a silver tone. And it, 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 people have asked me, what was the very first guitar you ever worked on? Well, I'm pretty positive now that I, you know, think about it. It was that Sears silver tone. Um, I got it when I was just a little kid, uh, six, seven years old, something like that. Later on, when I was a teenager, I didn't like the green gourd color that it was. <laughs> and it was kind of a weird color. So, uh, as a teenager, I painted it red. And actually, it didn't turn out terrible. It actually turned out fairly good. I've, I've still got it, and uh, I'll probably give that to one of my grandkids one of these days. And it still works, an electric guitar. I may have to show you that on video sometime. So, anyway... This thing here, she thought maybe it had had water damage. Uh, it was in the storage locker and the storage locker had flooded. But in, as soon as I saw it, I said, no, I don't think it's had any water damage. Uh, you know, you can generally see the wood swelling or cracking, the finish cracking, different things just tell you that it's had water damage. This doesn't look like water damage to me. It did have a few old strings on it. I took the strings off of it. The neck angle is really bad, but it's got a bolt on neck, so we should be able to fix that and get it to be pretty playable. Um, well, now that I look at it, I'm trying to decide. I guess the bridge is built right into here, so the saddle is built under here. It's really hard to see. Hard to string this little sucker because it goes through this little hole back here. <laughs> it's just really not made, designed real well. But I see, I see a potential problem. It looks like the saddle's broken half, so we'll probably have to get in there and work on that too. Looks, I don't know if you can see in there or not. I think you can see there's a gap between uh, the two base strings there. Try to get the right angle for you. But anyway, the saddle appears to be broken right there, so we'll uh, have to take that all apart. The bottom line is we're not going to spend a ton of time on this. We're basically just going to clean it up and make it playable. That's really about all it amounts to. Uh, do a little bit of a setup to make it play fairly easy, hopefully. So here we go. First thing we're going to do is just take 
things apart and clean the thing. So this is going to have to come off, I know, eventually anyway. So I'm going to take it apart. And I thought that little screwdriver would fit that slot, but it doesn't. Small as that screwdriver is, and it still doesn't fit that slot. So here's the sewing machine screwdriver. It fits it. And we'll put all the parts in a little basket here so that we don't lose anything. More than likely, we'll string, well, we can't string it up with this off of there because it has to go through this thing. So we'll have to put this back on there to string it, which I'm not looking forward to that, but... And this is uh, very dull, and I'm pretty sure we can buff that out and make that look like almost brand new. You can see here how it's attached, uh, fairly crudely made, but, uh, you know, and, oh, I see why the saddle's broken there. It's because there's a screw there, so it's really not broken. So we may not have to do anything with that, and we won't if we don't have to. Um, there's a screw here that holds it down. I think this is for adjusting the height and action, so that's, that's kind of cool. I didn't realize it had that built in. So we can, it just seems like it lifts right off of there, but now you can see it. Uh, that's just where the screw went through, so it's really not broken. So we're probably fine there, but it is real dirty. And this, this does let you adjust the action up and down, so it is kind of adjustable. That's kind of nice. I wouldn't ordinarily take this pick guard off, but I think I might in this case for just for cleaning up purposes. It, yeah, I don't know. Maybe not. I, I don't. If I don't see a reason to, why should I? I think we'll just clean it up and leave the pick guard in place. Um, I know the electronics already work because we tested it yesterday. So we're just going to get a damp cloth and just start cleaning here and see what happens. It's amazing how far soap and water will go even on cleaning up an instrument. These two washers I'm taking off of there. Sometimes that's your best bet. It's just a little light, lightly damp cloth and just wipe things down and clean them up. These knobs appear to be plastic with a silver coating or like a chrome over the plastic or something and that's pretty much war. So they're not work. Probably won't do anything with that. Might touch them up with some silver paint if I can, if I have any. I don't know if I have any. We'll just wipe down the back here just to see if there's any crud on there. The back actually, and I don't know if that's a veneer or not. It possibly could be, but the back actually has a little bit of bird's eye maple going on in here. It's nothing real pretty, but it's got a little bit of it. Let's just go ahead and wipe down the neck area to get any grime off of it. And we're going to take the tuning keys off too because they're all loose and I just want to inspect it really good. And I mean, the screws are coming out anyway, so I mean, they're almost out, literally. It's just weird why the screws would be that far out of this thing. It's just been sitting in storage. You wouldn't think the screws would have been that loose unless they were that way when he put it away. They may have been. Okay, there's not coming out of here because we got remnants of old strings in, in here too. Looks like there's quite a few remnants of old strings, like every one of them has pieces. Those old strings have been on there a long time it looks like. There we go, we got it now. So I think it'll pull out of there now. Yep. And you can, you can probably see how loose the screws are there. They're sticking up proud of the surface in almost every location. Up here it's tight maybe, but not really. Yeah, I think they all needed toothpicks anyway, so we're going to have to fill the holes. You'll notice that the... Tuners say Japan on them right there. <laughs> so, Japan. I thought maybe we'd have a little brand there, but they're, it's the only brand we got. I don't know if these ferrules will come out. Yep, they're coming out. I'm going to take them out too. Not that they have to come out, but I just don't want to lose them mostly. And the reason I'm taking this off here too is there's some badge of some sort that's 
broken right here and just got a fragment left on there. So we're gonna get rid of that too. I don't even know what that is. I have a feeling it was a badge that went all the way up here and tied across. That's what I think it was. Some little aluminum type badge like that you can see. And I think it went all the way up here and tied across there. It would be really cool if we could find that. You can see the nut was crudely made and uh, you can see that it was probably even cut with a circular saw, the material was. Cut at an angle with a circular saw because you can see the saw marks coming around like that. So that you can tell they didn't spend a lot of time on these things when they made them and set them up and that's okay. I mean it's just, it is what it is. It was an inexpensive guitar in the day. Uh, mine was too. And uh, But we are going to clean her up here and put her back to her glory. Uh, it would be really cool if we could find the badge that went on this, but you know, I don't, I'm going to look out on eBay just in case there would be one, but I doubt it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean up this nut and get rid of those marks. I'll tell you something, that's some hard plastic. I guess it's just gotten hard over the years. File is just basically gliding right over it. Hardly scratching it even. It's almost like it's porcelain. It's that hard. But it is cutting it. It's just cutting it very, very lightly. But it does. It honestly feels like you're trying to cut porcelain. I'm trying to round off the back side of it there so it's not quite so sharp. And I'll probably round off the front edge of it here just a little bit so it's not so sharp. I think the first thing I'm going to do is polish this up. And we've got our semi-chrome polish to work with that. I think we'll do a real good job on it. Got a damp rag here already. And I just have a feeling, give you a good look at it before. You can see how dull it is. I think you can see that. I hope you can. And... Uh, Pretty sure the semi-chrome polish will just bring that back to, you know, amazing life. Yeah, that sure did a nice job. Might even do it a little bit more. But you can, maybe you can see now this compared to this around here. Um, how much nicer that looks. It's literally shiny now where the other is just very dull looking. I think I'm going to try just a little bit more there because there's still a little bit of spot there that's a little bit dull. Yeah, that's, that almost looks like new. Not quite like new, but, but for sure really, really well cared for. That's what it looks like. This is going to be a family treasure, so I'm really happy to fix it up for the family. You probably already have figured out I'm kind of a sentimental guy when it comes to this stuff. I really feel the spirit in it and uh, just want to fix it up for them, make it as nice as I can for the grandson. So what do you think of that result there? That's really nice. It just looks so much better already. It, it Again, it doesn't look like it's brand new, but it does look like it's been really well cared for now. I think I'll just go ahead and clean up the inside a little bit too, mostly because I think it's just grungy. Taking the damp rag to it first, just wiping it down. And now we'll go ahead and put a little polish on that too, just to clean it up and get rid of any potential rust and stuff like that that's there. Okay, now that we've got that in real tip-top shape, we'll put the crown on her there with the... Uh, Renaissance wax. I think the Renaissance wax will just help it, uh, help the longevity of keeping it from rusting down the road. Just going to go ahead and wax all the surfaces inside out, everywhere. I just think that'll make it a much better job. Not that it needs it for the shine, just for the protection, I think. And there's what she looks like after the waxing and everything. It's just very shiny now and slick to hold. It feels really good in the hand. I'm going to take a wire brush to these tuners um, just because you can't get in there. It's just hard to get in there. And I've got a 
little narrow wire brush here and I'm going to just try to knock the rust off of these because there, there is, does appear to be rust there. Okay, so now what do we do about that rust? I'm not so sure that I know. You know, now, now that we've got all the heavy stuff off with the wire brush, I'm going to just try the semi-chrome polish and just see what it does to it, if I can get my finger in there. And I, where it's rusty, it's in the open areas mostly, so I think that might help. It looks cleaner. I can't say that it removed anything, but it looks cleaner. It looks a little shinier, and it even feels slicker. So I think it's a good move. Don't know that it's the perfect answer. That knocked off the worst of it, so uh, I don't know that they were comparable, but that one was pretty bad, and here's the other one. So the one on the bottom is the one I cleaned up. I think there, I can see a difference here. I don't know how well it shows up in the camera, but it feels different. It sure feels different. This feels gritty and, and rough, and this feels just slick, just as slick as anything. So that just that alone is worth it, I think. I notice here that we got a screw loose on this uh, gear, so let's see if we can tighten that up. Very loose, in fact, and it may, may be that they have to be somewhat loose to work. Um, that one's already snugged up, so I guess they're supposed to be snug, but just you don't want to over tighten these things because it makes them really hard to turn. It's much harder than it was, but but not terrible. They're they're kind of firm. This one's bent a little bit. I hate that. Um, uh, I don't know if I want to get into straightening these or not. I'm afraid I could break something. I'm going to try it. I will tell you that you probably shouldn't do this unless you've got some experience trying this. The uh, You can break this, I can tell you for sure. Got it straight one way. It was kind of bent catty-cornered. Let's see if I can straighten it the other way. There we go. Straighter, but not perfect yet. That's almost perfect there. You can't really tell it now. So, got that much straighter than it was. Yep, yeah, much better. Okay, so, again, I've showed this in videos before too, but I always oil these things. People say, oh, they won't hold if you oil them. Well, that's not true. The way the gears are made, you know, they can't turn, really. They literally can't turn. Because if you just think of the mechanics of it, when you try to spin this like a clock, spin it one direction or the other, this gear is perpendicular to this gear, and it just won't spin. It just won't. Um, people say, oh, my tuners are slipping. Well, you may have a problem, but generally speaking, these things are not slipping. Generally speaking. I'm not saying there's not ever a case. I'm just saying that nine times out of ten, that's not what's really happening. There's something else going on. And uh, anyway, so that's, that's my theory on it, and I've been doing this a long time, and I would swear by it. So oil them down pretty darn good, because it's been a long time since these puppies have seen any oil, and I doubt they ever have. And we'll spin them around a couple of times to get that oil worked in good. Now they're starting to, oh man, it's moving like butter now. I mean, you can just feel it loosening up. Yes, I could put a drill on here and do that, but I don't feel I don't feel the need. That's good. That's that's much better than it was. So we got one there in real good shape now. Took the bends out of it and all that stuff. Let's uh, see about this one here. If it's loose, it feels tighter than the other one. Although it's a little loose. That one was tight already. Oh, this one's bent pretty bad. Look, I don't know if you can see how bad it's bent here. You can see that's that's up, and you can see the tuning peg is actually bent in that direction. I'm exaggerating, but it's bent up like that, and now it's down. You can see it's down like this, so you can see it's out pretty bad. 
and you'll see how I straighten that here if it'll let me get, do this twice you know hopefully lightning won't strike here it is a dangerous operation for the tuning keys you can break them that's almost perfect not not perfect but real real close Sometimes you're better off just saying that's close enough, and and you know re you really can't hardly feel it now. Actually, I can see it's bent in the other direction as well, so I'm going to straighten it just a little bit in the other direction. Yeah, that's perfect now. That's really good. Okay, so now let's oil this one up and uh, see how well it turns after that. That really is nice now. Very, very nice machines on it now. Tune good, everything. They feel straight and good. You know, as I mentioned before, people say that, you know, the oil will cause them to slip. Well, my theory is that most people haven't taken what they call, machinists call it backlash. It's what's in the gear. Like, you know, these gears never fit up tight. Like, for instance, if you're tightening the tuning key, and you've already made a few turns well you've got the backlash out of it but let's say you go backwards a little bit well now there's you've created backlash the tuning key didn't turn at all this post did not turn at all but I backed that up now the post will wiggle see and there you go you've just created backlash and your tuning your uh, string just got loose so the the point of it is that everything has backlash in it now those Waverly tuning keys they're very precisely made. They have a lot less backlash than any tuning key that I've ever seen on the market, but even they have backlash. So the point is that you always tune up to the note and then you leave it. If you back off at all, uh, just a, if you back off just a little bit, then you've created backlash and now your post will move. If you keep it tight, your post won't move, see? It's at least on the, on the tightening side. You know, it won't back down. That's why tuning keys fail more than any other reason is that backlash issue. And all tuning keys have backlash, no matter what anybody tells you, they all have backlash. And even, like I said, the Waverly's, which are my favorite, and they are the best ones that I personally used, they have backlash too. But very little backlash compared to something like this. Okay, uh, we're going to put this back together. Um, before I do that, though, I'm going to look down the neck. The neck looks pretty darn flat. I don't honestly see a problem. I will just put a straight edge on it just to double check my eye here. Yeah, there's a little more underbow than it needs. I can see that and I was kind of suspecting a little bit more there. I'm sure it's been a long time since this has been adjusted, if it ever has, and if it even can be. Huh, that's weird. Surely it's not metric, but it might be. Well, that fits it, but it just doesn't seem like it fits it real well. I'm going to loosen it up first, just to see if we can get some, maybe some oil on it, because I'm sure it's been sitting around rusting for years. It's a brass nut, though, so shouldn't have any real too big issues. I'm just going to drop it like this and drop a drop of oil down in there. Oil is not bad for wood, folks. You don't have to worry about getting machine oil on something. It doesn't hurt it. In fact, I think there's some literature somewhere that Gibson and or Martin One recommend using 3-in-1 oil on your fretboard. So it's, you know, it's not bad. It won't hurt nothing. Now I'm tightening that up, and I'm actually going to go pretty snug. I'm going to try to over tighten it a little bit there. I still see quite a bit of underbow in it. When I look down at this direction, the other direction is harder for me to see the underbow, but this direction I see a lot of underbow. So I'm sure there's still quite a bit there. Just looking at it, I'm going to say 20 or 30 thousandths of underbow already is still there. So let's see if we can take it out because it needs to come out. It's way bad. Looking down at this way now, still quite a bit underbow, really. Way more than I know it needs. Like I said, if you can see the underbow clearly, you've probably got too much. 
Uh, that's really tight. The tightest I can get it by hand, anyway. And I would say there's still way too much under both. Let's just see what we got here. Set this straight edge on here. Here's the feeler gauge. And I'm just going to go straight to 20 thousandths because I kind of think that's about where we're at now. I think we were more before. Yeah, 20 goes right under there, no problem. And it might even be more than that yet. 20 thousandths, I think you might be able to see that in the camera. And uh, it goes under there without any resistance. It's pretty snug though. I mean, it's just right at the, you can tell it's right at 20 thousandths. So that's way too much. Um, I don't recommend putting an a actual wrench on this kind of thing, but I'm going to try it because I, we got to get rid of some of that underboard. That's way too much. Okay, I have my little tiny quarter inch drive socket set. Now, trust me, even with this, you can put way too much torque on something. So I'm just going to try to get in here lightly and just try to do it as gingerly as possible without going crazy. I want to check it often. I'm gonna look down here again and I can still see way too much underbow, way too much. But I don't know that we're gonna fix it. Not with the truss rod. I'm afraid I'm either gonna bust the fretboard loose or I'm gonna break the truss rod. Let's see if we've done any better than the 20 thousandths. We're not even really getting anywhere. Okay, so what I'm going to try is a different tactic. I'm going to loosen this up. This is going to help anything, but I'm going to try it. I'm literally going to press it against my knee here. And I'm, I'm not going to push real hard and crazy because you'll break it. You'll bust it. I'm just putting pressure on it like, you know, maybe 50, 60 pounds worth of pressure on across my knee. Just trying to help it out anything to help out the the wood the wood doesn't want to it's just like i have mentioned on other things once the wood decides that it's in that shape it doesn't want to get out of that shape so i'm just pushing on this trying to help it with some back bow here doubt it's even going to help it at all i really doubt it's going to make any difference whatsoever it hurts my knee too much so we're going to try this I'm gonna just push down on it. I'm not putting all my weight on it. I mean, I could bust it right in half if I push hard enough. I know I could. Put quite a bit of torque on something like that to try to help that truss right out. Get a little bit of flex going on in the wood and then tighten it down and see what you get. I doubt seriously it's gonna help it, but it's worth a try. You know, it didn't cost anything to try, and as long as you don't break it, it doesn't hurt anything. Alright, now as I tighten it, I'm going to try to do the same thing here. Push down a little bit on it. It's just snugged up tight now. Let's, Let's torque run down a little bit. It's getting pretty tight there now. Let's see if we can see any difference. I kind of doubt it to be honest, but let's just see. Yeah, there's a little difference, I gotta admit. Look, I can't, I got the 20 thousandths here. I'm putting it on here and I'm pushing and I'm hitting it now. I'm, I'm Before I just went under there without hitting it all. It's still a little loose in a place or two. Right in here, it still goes under there, but just barely. So we've improved it a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit. It's been a lot of years with that string pressure on it, bowing that neck in a storage unit, and it just isn't going to want to come back in five minutes here, so. Wow. Now it's just barely going under in one spot here. Right in this area here, it's still a little low, so let's focus on that area. Again, I'm probably putting about... I don't know, 20, 30 pounds of pressure. I don't really know. It's hard to tell. Maybe 30 or 40 pounds. I doubt I'm putting 40. Let's see if it'll tighten a little bit more now. 
think we're just about as good as we're going to get though. It's not, doesn't seem like it improved any that time. Uh, looking down at my eye now, looking down at my eye, I can definitely see a difference. I can definitely see a difference. It's, uh, you know, still too much. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you, but it's, but it's better. Afraid I'm going to break it. Just afraid I'm going to break it. I think that's as far as I'm going to go with it right there. That's certainly an improvement. Way better than it was. What I'll do is I'll concentrate the filing on this end and on this end and just try to file some of the bow, under bow out with the frets. That's the best I can do. Okay, we're going to level these frets. These frets are so dull looking and, and they're, you can tell they're real shiny brass or will be when we're done. It's not perfect, but that's probably about as good as we're going to do. I, I filed a lot more on this area and a lot more in this area to try to get rid of some of that underbow. It's not going to fix it, but it'll help it. Now but it, these ends are sticking out just a little bit. Okay, now we're going to round them back off. There's what she looks like before the oil. And now we'll put the oil on there and she's going to look like a brand new fretboard just about. See this peg head now? I'm going to take the oil. I mean, it's not bad shape, but I'm going to take the linseed oil and just wipe it down with that and then wipe it dry. I think I'm going to do the same thing to the body down here and just take and wipe it down with the linseed oil and then just wipe it dry. You know, I can't say she's going to pop exactly, but she's starting to look better. Let's start to look like a decently cared for old guitar now. Let's take the semi-chrome to this uh, pickup cover here and see what that does on it. I think it looks like it's chrome. Um, you know, I don't know. It. Hope it. I don't think it's going to flake off or anything, but it. it we'll make it look better. I'm pretty sure. And we're going to go around the edges because we're going to do the pick guard too. This plastic we're going to wipe down with the semi chrome. The plastic's in pretty decent shape, but it's dull, and I think we can make it look so much better. Yeah, that that really made that pop. Yeah, that definitely looks better. Now, hopefully you can see a before and after on the pick guard. See how dull the pick guard is there? I don't know if it shows up in the video or not. I can't tell by looking at the viewfinder. But anyway, the pick guard is not bad. It's just dull and it's got a lot of old scratches in it. So let's just take the semi-chrome polish to the whole pick guard. And I kind of think we'll get it looking a lot better. As a matter of fact, I see some scratches disappearing dark. Like here's a dark scratch right here. Let's just see if we can make that go away. Maybe you can see the dark scratch. Yeah, I think you can see it right there. Very dark scratch. Let's just see if we can make that go away. I'm not saying we can, but let's just see what it does. It's a pretty deep one. Yep, it went away. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a good deal here. It, it's definitely improving it, I can tell already. Got some scratches up here, and with a little elbow grease, they're going away too. Yeah, it's actually working pretty darn good. Better than I thought. So I think it's going to make this pick guard just really pop. Well, once again, I'll, I'm, I won't lie to you, it just it doesn't look like it's brand new, but it sure does look like it's been cared for. So it definitely improved the finish a lot. Down here it's a little harder to get into, so I'm just going to take a little bit of time and go into that too, just to make it match. Otherwise it won't match very well. And just for a little bonus protection and whatever, I'll just wax this pick guard and this cover here with the Renaissance wax. We're not going into the electronics on this because I did test them and they work. 
I don't know a ton about guitar electronics, to be perfectly honest with you. I am no expert. I'm very good with electric. I can fix dang near anything that's got an electrical problem. So if it had an electrical problem, I could probably fix it. But I don't sit here and tell you that I know anything about the actual workings of an electric guitar, because I don't ever work on them. Um, but I wouldn't be afraid to tackle it if it needed, if it needed work. Okay, gonna call that good. I'm feeling a little moisture down in here, I think. Uh, maybe because I washed it down with some water earlier with a damp cloth, but I didn't think I got enough moisture on that rag to go anywhere. So I think I felt something water-wise come out of here, so I'm gonna stick this down in there just in case. I don't see anything. Well, we're ready to start putting her back together and start to string her up, and we'll see where it goes from there. Pretty much every screw hole in this peg head is, wa is wallered out, so I'm just going to jam some toothpicks down in there and uh, break them off. You don't really have to glue them in. You can if you want to, but jamming them in there, breaking them off, will take up enough slack that um, the screws will hold just fine. They, it really works good. I think that's got them. I got them pretty jammed up pretty tight there. Take the uh, little chisel here and just knock off the uh, edges that are sticking out of the hole. Picking out the screws that I, you know, I, I know they're all mixed up, but there's certain different size ones. It's going in real nice. It's the, the screws are going in very tight now because of the uh, holes being jammed full of toothpicks. And one of the screws is missing, and that's not surprising considering how loose all of them were. So let's find another screw to put in there. Okay, we should be able to put the ferrules back in it now. These ferrules are kind of dull looking. I'm going to lay this 600 sandpaper on this soft carpet, roll them around a little bit. And I think that's going to be enough to clean them up and make them look halfway decent. I don't know if it's much of an improvement or not. Yeah, there's, there's an improvement there. It's not a big deal, but it just looks a little better. I think you can possibly see how dull this is and the dark marks that are on there. I think you can see it there now clearly in the video. Anyway, I'm going to uh, take the semi-chrome polish to that, and I believe that's going to make that look like brand new. Looks just like brand new now. Really nice. As my friend Jeff Bradshaw says, at elderlyiron.com start all before you tighten any and that's a very good practice on pretty much anything that needs multiple screws or bolts there you go well man this guitar is starting to look like a decently cared for old guitar pretty happy with the way it's turning out here not that these washers matter, but I'm just going to sand each one of them lightly on both sides. I think they're aluminum washers and they're oxidized. So, like I said, it's not going to make any difference. Nobody's going to see them, but it doesn't hurt to just clean them up a little. And we'll put the bridge back on there the way it was. Now the sad thing about this is, I can't tell about the adjustment. The way they designed it, it's adjustable, but you can't adjust it with the strings on it. Because you can't 
this can't be put on later. Well, yes, it can. I take it back. Wasn't thinking. The, this can be put on later. I, I thought that the strings had to go through here. That's okay. Good. We're in good shape. We'll just leave that off till the last thing. I thought I had to have the that cover on there, but I wasn't thinking right. Hey, I, even I have a brain jam every once in a while. And the way these are made, at some point they start lifting, so I'm just trying to get them at the lowest possible point there, but yet still touching. So this is as low as it'll go right there, and I think that's what we're going to need. We may still have to take this off and adjust it, but we'll see. I just happen to have some electric guitar strings in stock. Not that this is the best brand or anything, but that's what I have, and so we're going to use that. It's not going to make a lot of difference, I don't think, in this particular situation. And strings are changeable, so if they don't like them, they can change them. We've got our strings on it, and the action's not that bad. It's right about a hundred thousandths all the way across there, which isn't terrible. I mean, you know, it's not the best. It's not as good as an electric guitar should be. But I think in this particular case, uh, especially knowing the client, client and everything, I think this is plenty good. I think that uh, they'll be very happy with this, considering that the action was probably 250 thousandths when they brought it in. I mean, literally, I told her, I said, you could throw a dog under there. So, uh, I mean, it's, it was pretty high. So I think the combination of, of uh, making that truss rod tighter and lowering this bridge down as low as we could get it made the difference. We could go into a lot of time setting the neck angle, but that would take some time, and I'm not sure that it would make a lot of difference in this to this particular customer for this particular guitar. So I think we're pretty much done with it. We're just going to plug it in now and see what she sounds like. One last finishing touch. The strap button is missing down here on the end. We're going to put that back on. Uh, I have had obviously have one in stock, so we'll just screw that on there. Uh-oh. That didn't work out real good. Oh, there's some kind of filler in there, and it stripped it out. We're going to have to drill that out and... Oh, I see what happened. They had a plastic end pin in there, and the plastic broke. And it, uh, that's what it was. They had a plastic button there, and it broke off. So we'll have to fix that. Glad I saw that. We'll just drill her out, and if the plastic's solid, it'll be fine. If not, we'll have to take it out and plug the hole. Okay, so we're solid there. I believe we've got her all tuned up. So let's see what she sounds like. Well, the electronics on it are surprisingly clean and good, it seems to me like. The uh, volume and everything works. The tone works. Silvertone guitar, at least that's what I think it is. I don't know that for a fact. It's probably made by Harmony. That's my very best guess anyway. I hope you enjoyed this little restoration. Thanks for watching. Yeah.